Hey there, it's me, your stomach, down here, you know, the one who can talk. Anyway, I was just at a yoga sesh with a few of the other stomachs, and mid-tree pose, everyone started talking about Subway's new savory rotisserie-style chicken Caesar signature wrap. It's a mouthful to say, I know, but with creamy Caesar dressing and double the rotisserie-style chicken, it's not the only thing that's full, if you know what I mean. It's me, I'm the one that's full, because <laughs> I'm a stomach. That's kind of what I do. Subway, make it what you want. Double meat based on average six-inch sub. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Partners in Health and Biz with your host, Gail Dixon. Tune in every Saturday, 9 a.m. for great shows about obtaining and maintaining health, business, and finance. Learn from the experts here at PIHradio.net. And now, broadcasting from the Partners in Health and Biz studio, here's Gail. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to my show. Welcome to Partners in Health and Biz. We are broadcasting live from our Columbia, Maryland studio. So happy you could join me. And this morning, we have a very special guest. As you know, you've, I'm sure you've been to our website, Saving Eyesight. The American Academy of Ophthalmology is our topic this morning. And uh, we want to jump right into the show this morning. I want to, first of all, introduce you to my special guest, and she is no other, none other than Dr. Diana Seldomridge, MD, MBA. She is a clinical spokesperson for the American Academy of Ophthalmology, and she's a board-certified ophthalmologist. In 2000, Dr. Seldom Ridge received a combined MD, MBA from the Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons and Columbia Business School. Following her graduate education, she completed her residency training in ophthalmology at the Duke University Eye Center in Durham, North Carolina. She then completed fellowship training in cornea, cataract, and reflective surgery at Chicago Cornea Consultants in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Seldom Ridge now resides in North Carolina with her husband, an orthopedic surgeon, sorry, and their two children. She has worked in both private practice and academic settings and currently is a member of the Department of Ophthalmology at the Duke University Eye Center. So without further ado, I would like to open the microphone and welcome Dr. Diana Seldom Ridge to our show. Good morning, Gail. Thank you for having me, and thank you for putting this excellent topic on your show. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so happy that you could uh, join us. Yes, this is a very important topic, and this is UV Awareness Month for uh, the month of July, and so I was able to contact your office and get a hold of you so that our listeners can find out some wonderful information that uh, we all need to learn about. So we're going to um, <laughs> thank you again, and we're going to jump into the show and ask you, first of all, what is UV? <laughs> because so many people ask, um, so many pe- so many of us know that you hear about UV light and that UV light that we should protect our eyes from UV light. What is UV light? UV light, Gail, is the light that you don't see. So there's visible light, and then there's light that comes from the sun that's not visible. The UV light can be UVA or UVB, and you want to protect yourself from both of those wavelengths of light. So we don't see these, but they are there all the time. Anytime there's light, there's UV light. So this is what we are talking about. Okay. All right, so, okay, we know about the UV light, and but is this UV light dangerous to the eyes? Yes, the UV light, just like it can cause problems with your skin, it can cause problems in the eye. And the three big things we see from UV exposure in the eye are cataracts, We have non-cancerous growths that can occur on the surface of the eye, and then we can also get cancers that grow on the surface of the eye and on the skin around the eye. Mm -hmm. So these are all important. They're all clinically significant, and we can talk about each of those individually if you would like. Okay. And I've also uh, heard or read recently that uh, UV 
light or not wearing sunglasses can cause uh, glaucoma. Is that is that correct? Is that uh, also something else that can be caused uh, by the UV light? UV light is not a known risk factor for glaucoma. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, see, that's why you're here to straighten us up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, you can, on occasion, uh, some of the other things that UV light can cause might indirectly lead to an increase in your eye pressure, which then in turn could lead to glaucoma, but typically we don't consider UV light as a risk factor for glaucoma. Okay. Okay. All right. And um, so we have uh, our listeners are tuned in. Uh, some of them are listening online. Many of them are listening online, and uh, we do have a call-in number. It's uh, 347-945-7433. If there are any uh, listeners that have a question for Dr. Seldom Ridge, then you can uh, call in, and we'll take your calls at the appropriate break time. So, wow, there are um, – so, okay, so we're talking about UV light and how it, how it can be dangerous to the eyes, so can you give us, Dr. Seldenbridge, some tips that our listeners can follow to actually protect their eyes? Yes. We recommend everybody wear, when they're outside, sunglasses with full UVA and UVB or 100% UV protection. In addition to that, it's really important not only to wear your sunscreen, of course, we hear that all the time from the dermatologist, but also to wear a wide-brimmed hat. And the reason for that is that you can get UV exposure through your glasses from the top or from the sides, and we're trying Mm -hmm. to prevent all of that light from penetrating to get into the eye. Okay. Yes, I know um, there are – my mother has diabetic retinopathy, Retinopathy. <laughs> yes. Say that very fast. It's she a has, tongue twister. Uh, yes, yes. And <laughs> she has that, and she has had uh, several surgeries on her eyes, and also she has um, the glaucoma a little bit. And uh, so I know she always, her doctor, uh, her doctors always tell her she, that she must wear sunglasses whenever she's outside. And um, then there. Uh, I I know that the sunglasses that have the the lenses that go all the way around the side of the eyes, not just the wraparound the glasses. The yes. wraparound, right? And now that I'm older, I'm starting to look for those type of glass sunglasses that are the wraparound, not just the ones that um, cover the the front the uh, front lens of your eyes. So that's very important. And like you say, um, a, a hat would help. And, you know, so many of us are, this is the summertime, we're going to the beach, and we have young children and adults. What about um, children? Is it important for um, us to start early to protect our, our young kids, our children's eyes as well? Yes. So your exposure to UV light occurs over your lifetime. So it's what we consider to be a lifetime risk, which means that the more protection you get when you're young, the better off you are when you're older. So we hear the dermatologists talk about using sunscreen and avoiding burns when you're a child. It's the same thing with UV exposure in the eye. You want to protect your eye as much as possible because it's a cumulative risk. In other words, it adds up over time. And the wraparound sunglasses, you make a good point. These are excellent because they do prevent the light from getting in the sides. And Having side protection is especially important for people who do outdoor sports like snow sports because you can get a lot of glare and reflection off the snow. So you really want to have those wraparound sunglasses in those situations. Right. Yeah, I know um, some people will look at you strange in the wintertime when you have on (laughs) sunglasses. And I wear my sunglasses year-round, and I've always been wearing sunglasses since I was young. For some reason, the um, sun seemed to bother my eyes, and I so I just started at a young age. I don't, I don't know if it was my parents that you know encouraged it, but I just you know tended to do that. And I know, uh, as a health and wellness consultant, I started my son uh, when he was very young wearing sunglasses and. Um, you know, taking him to the beach, and he had his little baby sunglasses on. Right. So, yeah, so right. that is good yeah, for you. So I'd like of, to put you on a poster and hang you in clinic. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, so, you know, now um, I have friends that have uh, little kids, like six months old, and they're starting to take them to the to the uh, swimming pool or to the beach and, you know, learning, teaching them how to swim at a young age. And um, so recently uh, I was at the swimming pool with uh, at my mother's complex where she lives, and my, my sisters and I were swimming. And I noticed the glare off the swimming pool. It was so sunny, and it was glaring off the water. The water was glaring. And so I said, I don't know if these sunglasses are going to stay on or not, but I'm swimming with my sunglasses on. (laughs) So I I swam with my sunglasses on, and my sister said, although they're going to come off, well, I, I went under the water and came up, and they didn't come off. So I think that's, you know, what do you think about that, swimming with uh, some sunglasses on? I think it's a great idea. In fact, that's what I do, and that's what my family does. We all wear baseball hats, and I have some sport glasses that stay on. I can go underwater, and it's not a problem. They stay on my face. They're very comfortable. And Mm -hmm. you're correct. You get a lot of reflection off the water. So it's a really important in time to protect your eyes. And the other thing is that if you're outside, you mentioned the beach, umbrellas are great. Don't be fooled. By the umbrella, though, you still get a lot of reflected light, and there's still a lot of UV exposure that occurs under the umbrella, so you still want to remember to protect your eyes when you're under the umbrella. Okay, good, good, good. Mm-hmm. All right, so are there any benefits to our eyes from UV? You know, we hear yes. about all the negative things, but, I mean, could there possibly be any benefits? benefits from UV light? There are benefits to UV light. And you've heard the expression, of course, everything in moderation. So you do need some UV light and for a couple of reasons. Number one is that natural light helps to regulate the sleep-wake cycle. So if you don't get any light, then you're going to have difficulty with your sleep patterns. So that's number one. Your body depends on some natural light. And then the second thing is that sunlight actually helps us utilize vitamin D in our body. So right, you, right. you want a little bit of sun exposure. That's important. The key is not to get too much. So we have mm-hmm. to balance what we need with what's too much. Okay. Um, I, that, that's something I definitely knew about, um, the vitamin D connection to the sun. My dad, um, he's, <laughs> I guess he listens to me sometimes, but um, he recently asked his doctor to, ch- to check his vitamin D level. And his doctor said, why do you want me to check your vitamin D level? I'm sure it's, it's fine. And my, my dad, he's in his 80s, he said, no, 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 doctor, please, I want you check, to check my vitamin D level. So anyway, his doctor did a, a test. Come to find out, sure enough, his vitamin D level was very low. And I really had a good feeling, a good um, indication that that would probably be the case because my dad, he stays inside a lot, and he keeps his windows um, closed, his uh, shades drawn, and there's hardly any light coming in, and I'm constantly encouraging him to open up the wine, the blinds and let sunshine in. So I'm glad you brought that, you know, that we're discussing that um, about the benefits of a UV and the connection to vitamin D because a lot of people um, do stay inside a lot. And, and then in the wintertime, you know, we don't go out as often. And so, you know, I'm, you know, I know I encourage people to go out even in the wintertime, take short walks or whatever so that they can get some sunshine. Yes, Be, there there are definite health benefits to being outside in addition to the sunlight. It, it, uh, it's important that we all try to get outside a little bit every day, get some exercise, and that will benefit you. Just make sure you protect your eyes when you do it. And the other thing, Gail, I wanted to mention, you, you had said earlier that you started protecting your eyes on your own simply because you felt like the sun was bothering them. And I like to think of that as part of the body's natural way of telling you what to do because we have some built-in protective mechanisms, and that's one of them. If you feel like you're outside and it's bright and your eyes are bothering you, then that means you're getting UV exposure, and you should throw on your hat and sunglasses. And then the other thing is that you mentioned cloudy days, and 
This is really important because both in the winter, 